good practice, good preparation, good week. Um, I'll focus on one and know. I'll focus on our processes and you know, kind of continue the process all the way to the game, through the game. So questions, please. Is Micah a fitness part of the program right now? He won't be. He won't be. He's moving on. We're moving on. We wish him the best, and we don't judge. Johnny and DJ Johnson able to give it a go this week? Healthier. Looking good, so we'll see. Who fills in as a punt returner for Micah, or is that something you're still battling with? We've got three guys that we've repped. Uh, they actually split reps with the ones throughout camp and uh, throughout our process this season, so but we'll, we'll show that on game day more than anything else. What have you seen by way of permit or blocking from some of the younger guys, the younger tight ends, if, if DJ's unable to go, if Johnny's unable to go, just those are two guys who are some of the strongest permit blockers you had. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from the younger tight ends this past week in particular? It seemed like they improved in that. Yeah, that I regard. think all along they have. I mean, throughout the, uh, the way we practice, they're all getting equal reps, uh, not to mention the mentoring of these older guys, not to mention it's a big part of practice. We do it every day, every single day. So. We feel really good about their technique, uh, about the way they understand leverage, how it works with the offense, and they perform really well. So, uh, you know, for us, regardless of the situation or circumstance, you know, next man will be required to get up there and do the job at the same level as everybody else. Their adjustments to just even who might be on scout team by way of the receiver position. I know like Brevard and uh, Delgado were down there, but just be with between injury or attrition or whatnot, if there's just been some movement a little bit lower on the depth chart there. Uh, anytime you, you have any type of issue, you always move some guys around. So but the guys have adjusted well, and they've done a really good job. It's no question that Utah has been a different team as soon as Cam Riding took over at QB1. How has preparation been this week for a guy with a dual threat? He's effective in the air and on the run. He does it all really well, just like you mentioned. And uh, he's got great command of the offense. Really does. Throws an accurate ball, strong arm. Um, Really understands the run game well, design runs. He improvises really well, keeps plays alive with his feet. Um, you can tell, I mean, he's, the guy's really a, an excellent football player, and he's playing at a really high level. Protects Ellen, the, go ahead. I was going to say, he protects the ball really well, too. I don't think he's starting to pick in four or five games. What goes into that? And that's probably an oversimplified question, but a quarterback who does protect the ball effectively, what, what, what usually no, the answer No, it's, it's, uh, it's not. It's a good question. It's, uh, you know, number one decision making goes into that, right? Uh, and even when making a decision where you know it's going to be a contested ball is the ability to put in a spot where maybe only the receiver can catch it. He does that. He has that ability to him. And he's a guy, we recruited him hard in high school. I mean, we thought he was a great football player and, you know, he's done really well. But he's always been that guy. He's always been the guy that, uh, you know, almost like uh, the catalyst for, you know, big things to come. He did it in high school. He's been doing it for them. Uh, he's, he's, he's a very physical runner now. I don't know how much tape you studied, but... He's physical. He gets out on the perimeter. He's run the ball inside. Um, the read game is something that they do really well also. But uh, they come at you so many different ways in the run game and play action. It's all married up, you know. It's all, uh, it all complements each other. makes it really difficult to defend. There's always a lot of attention on your guys' games that are outside perspective, big football games. Your squad always seems to play some of its best football. What do you attribute that to? Well... I mean, we prepare the same way every single week. Um, you, you'd like to think that every single week you're getting better and better. So that's uh, always been the goal since day one. And I think teams that are really focused on the importance of technique, fundamentals, the simplicity of pad level, you know, at this time of year, have the ability to keep getting better. And if you do that, you know, your season gets stronger. I think we've been doing that. And, uh, and we still have miles to go. So uh, that being said, playing against an excellent team, great football environment. Just really excited about the opportunity. Last time you played these guys, again, much has changed. Well, coaching's changed, players have changed, etc. But Verone didn't play a lot because tactically you wanted to go with the boundary safeties against a very run-heavy Utah team. How different is Verone compared to two years ago where he's bigger, he's obviously tied for the nation lead in interceptions, and you feel that much more comfortable putting him in any situation compared to his freshman season? Yeah, he's as good as any player we had in the secondary back in 19, you know, or better. He's been playing at a high level. You know how uh, important he is from his football IQ standpoint, his ability to set us and fix us or even erase things when they're not exactly right. So with him, uh, he's a guy that you just never want off the field. He's that guy. You guys didn't get to play against Utah last year just because of the schedule, short season. How excited is Noah Sewell to go up against his brother, and how cool is it for that family to have two players on opposing teams at one game? Yeah, well, as you well know, their, their, their family is just a very big part of our family here. 
I'm sure that always plays a huge role, but I'm sure both brothers are really focused on preparation, on execution, and um, that's the way the family DNA goes. They just, they're all about getting the job done, so I'm sure both guys are really focused on playing their best games. I know I asked you last week, is there anything new with Drew Mathis or if he might be able to come back this year? You know, I think there's a good chance. It'll be something in the postseason. It won't be in the next couple of weeks or so, but he's working really hard. You know, we'd love to see that for him, a guy that's a senior, so we'll see. With maybe more opportunities coming for uh, young wide receivers, uh, Chris, Troy, Dante, uh, what have you seen from them recently? Those guys are really good football players. You know, they've been right there nipping at the heels of some of the older guys. And uh, throughout camp, throughout uh, the guys that were here in spring, right, because they were here for spring ball as well, they've, they've just matured quickly. And they've made some plays with their opportunities. I know Troy had a chance last game to make a really big play, was close to coming down with that ball. Um, they're really close to just being that next level person. So we had complete confidence in all those guys to step in and play well. mentioned he was supposed to play. Is that the case? And can he be someone who actually contributes now? I know he's been a long time since he's played because of injury, but is that still viable? Yeah, it's been a long time since he's played, but he is. He practiced full speed, did everything. And not just against the scouts, but also when the ones go against the one, twos against the twos, and he looks great, you know, so we expect him to be a, a contributor. All right, thank cool. you, Coach. Guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it.